Hello everyone and welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host AJ Two and Love here bringing your AW Dynamite review uh, for September 9, twenty twenty. This is my second time uh, re-recording this uh, podcast episode because uh, last night uh, I recorded it, but unfortunately uh, the full episode didn't go through. So, but. Nonetheless, I'm recording again. So thank you all for joining me. Like and subscribe if you're new. It was a solid fall show from All Out Pit Review on Saturday. We had some promos. We had some video packages. Fun stuff. We also had a debut of Miro, a.k.a. former Rusev, now is all elite. So... Fun stuff tonight on Dynamite, so thank you all for joining me, and let's get into the review. So, Chris Jericho and MJF open up the show uh, after Tony Schiavone um, introduced us all to Dynamite. Their limos uh, stopped in front of each other. They both came out, both praised each other, both talked about how each other was robbed. Um, at All Out, uh, how they both um, have an AEW World Title shot in the future. So afterwards, they went their separate ways, and on split screen, they both called each other at the same time losers. Funny spot to open Dynamite. Then we had our first match of Dynamite tonight. We had a uh, the Lucha Brothers, Jurassic Express. Jurassic Express, of course, they've got more steam as of late. They've been more push. Um, obviously, all out, they lost in that fun match against the Young Bucks. However, their rebound against the Lucha Brothers in a pretty good match. Uh, Junk. Uh, Luchasaurus, after he got the hot tag, he landed a big one arm choke slam uh, on Ray Phoenix. Uh, good, nice spot. And uh, standing moon cell for a two. Um, Phoenix, he hit a gory bomb uh, leg drop combination on both Jurassic Express. Um, was a fun spot. They. Jungle Boy, he kicked out of a sit of the package power driver solve combination uh, for, for near fall. You don't really see that. But the finish came when Pentagon accidentally got hit with a destroyer by Phoenix and uh, got rolled up uh, by Jungle Boy. For the win was a fun match. Um, so um, Jurassic Express um, rebounds with a nice win. Um, afterwards, Eddie Kingston and Butcher and Blade were both trying to calm down. Excuse me. The Lutz Brothers. And eventually they shook hands. Uh, Eddie Kingston. He said that he was never eliminated from the Battle Royal, which I didn't really catch at first, but if you look back, he went under the bottom rope, and then he was chokeslammed by Lance Archer um, off, off the turnbuckle onto the outside, but he didn't go over the top rope, so nice little mention. Curious how that will factor in. Uh, two dynamite full Z. So next we had Lance Archer and Jake Roberts. They were both in front of uh, graffiti, like outside um, alley doors of sort. Um, it was raining, so um, Archer he talked about how Moxley he has been champion. For way too long, 
how the Murhawk Monster will be the AEW World Champion soon, and there's nothing nobody can do about it. Yeah, everybody dies. Lance Archer, John Moxley, can't wait to see it. The rain and a nice touch to the promo, I would say. <laughs> but yeah, can't wait. Apparently, it's going to be on AEW's one year anniversary show, October 14th. Lance Archer, John Moxley. Should be fun. So, afterwards, we had Matt Hardy come out and address the fans, address AW, uh, talk about his spot at uh, All Out when uh, in his match with Sammy Guevara, that scary spot when uh, Sammy Guevara speared um, Matt Hardy off that scissor lift. Um, and through the table, but Matt's head landed off the floor. And all of a sudden, the match resumed. And Matt won. But still, that scary spot. Um, Matt, he talked about the support he's gotten and that he's thankful for it. How he's a lucky man. Um. Pointed out his wife in the audience. Rebby was there and their newborn child uh, was there. Um, he talked about how now he's planning to give back. Now when he's back, he wants to win wrestling matches, get ranked, and go after his first AEW title. Now, I'm glad... Everyone's glad to see Matt back, and everybody's happy to see him healthy now. Which is good. Um, obviously, at that spot, you're just glad he's okay. Now, this is probably a learning experience for AEW, um, obviously. But I'm intrigued to see now that Matt's healthy. What? What title is he going to go for? Because all of the uh, pretty much title scenarios are pretty much up and nice right now. But we'll see. So just glad to see Matt's back healthy. So Orange Cassidy face and Helico. Now... The Hybrid 2, they have not been on AEW Dynamite in, I would say, months. Yeah, months. I mean, and Helco and Jack Evans are both talented, but uh, they the tag team division is just such good in depth. They're kind of... Not really uh, have much of a role, but this was an okay match. Um, Orange Cassidy, he won with the Orange Punch. Afterwards, he was attacked by Santana Ortiz, who were confronted by the best friends, and they talked about how that this feud needs to end. That the best friends um, challenged Santana Ortiz to a parking lot fight next week, and that's what we'll get. Excuse me, two very solid teams going for the lock. Parking lot fight should be fun next week. So, after that, we had um, Alex Marvez. He um, tried to get a word in backstage with the Young Bucks. He kept knocking on their door. And then, eventually, the Young Bucks opened their door. 
and gave Alex Marvez a super kick party. And that was a fun little spot, which, of course, some probably like Marvez, some probably don't like him. It was funny, obviously, it adds to the more serious factor of the Young Bucks. So, Kip Sabian, uh, next, he announced the best man for his wedding with Penelope Ford. So, first, he was trying to announce in this big uh chubby guy Puff he came out and Kip Sabian said oh you got it all wrong Uh, thank you for subscribing to my Twitch channel but I said you're the best comma man and then he tried to introduce him again but Brian Pillman Jr. came out and he said, no, I love you, thank you, but I said you're the best, dot, dot, man. So then, try it for a third time, and out came Miro, a.k.a. the former Rusev of WWE. I mean, he got a really good reaction from the fans that are in attendance. I think there's 15%. Excuse me. Now in attendance for Dynamite. Which good. Um, looks in good shape. Uh, he obviously dyed his hair. Which is a little different. So he came out and he basically voices um, frustrations um, with WWE. Um, he said after living in the same house for 10 years how there's this glass ceiling and imaginary brass rings where you can take those brass rings and you shove them up your ass. So, a little touch, a little shy of Vince McMahon, the whole brass rings situation. Uh, then, he talked about how he and Kip Sabian, uh, he was not just best friend because they're close. Um, he talked about how when it comes to dynamite, he'll devour his opponents in and out of the ring. And that Miro is now all elite. So, now, there will be people uh, on social media that will be complaining about how, oh, look, AW took another lackey from. WWE. I don't really think that. The fact is, I see a guy that was underutilized in WWE for whatever reason because of how he sp- spoke, how he didn't fit into the narrative, the agenda of WWE, from how he looked, etc. He got over, um, and um, it's just good to see him happy, and it's just good to see him have a fresh start now. After all the crap he endured in WWE. So, we had that, um, an sit down with Tony Schiavone and Adam Hangman Page or Hangman on Page so Tony Schiavone asked him how he's feeling after all out 
Um, Hangman said, well, people were um, holding their breath, waiting for Hangman and um, Kenny to implode. Uh, they both, um, how FTR should not have been the number one contenders, how Young Bucks, he cost the Young Bucks, how he lost two of his best friends, and just how um, he blames himself for that, and says he and Omega can climb the same mountain, probably get another tile shot in the future. So we go from that to Chris Jericho and Hang, or excuse me, Jake Hager versus Joey Janela and Sykes. Now, for my followers that cover AEW, know how I feel about Sonny Kiss. Um, I love Jericho. I love Hager. Janela. Really talented, of course, I'm down because he has fallen so high since last year. Um, he wasn't obviously a main eventer, but he was a mid-carder. So, yeah, so this match was okay, but I mean... I just don't like to watch Sunny Kiss. Um, but Janela, um, he hit a suicida on Chris Jericho. He started attacking Jericho with a chair because no DQ. Uh, he got caught, got suplexed onto the legs of the chair. Um, uh, Jericho and Janela were fighting on stage. Uh, Jer- Janela is thrown to the table by Hager. Uh, Sonny Kiss, he, w- he was blown um, in the face with a fire extinguisher. And Hager pinned Kiss with a Uranagi arm triangle combination. Afterwards... Uh, he said, or Jericho said, he and Hager are going to go for the tag team titles. So, it's interesting because, I mean, Santana Ortiz are part of the inner circle. And they are ranked in the top five of the tag team contenders. Now... It's intriguing because does it end probably lead to a match between them four and Santana Ortiz leave the inner circle? Interesting dynamic to think about. So we had an update of MJF with his campaign. He, um, Went loose on everyone. He fired all his employees. Uh, got in me in his face. Um, berated her. Um, told, told her she's, he's tired of seeing her crooked teeth. Told her to go away and she's fired. Then there was a guy who... Um, how box of I think gum and his ring and and JF got a piece of gum and told him to get out and he and Wardlow looked like he had some tension and then uh MJF reminded Wardlow that Tony Khan doesn't sign off on his checks and JF does. So at first it looked like they were going to have a problem, but I guess they did not. So what's the next step in the MJF campaign for a title shot? We'll see. So then we had John Moxley promo talking about how 
that he's got more on his plate. Um, that Lance Archer is now the number one contender for his title. Um, said that chances are chances, and would you really want to bet against Moxley? I mean, like I said, I can't wait for the match on October 14th. Should be fun. Moxley always cuts a good promo. So, after that, we had FTR, their celebration. They um, were celebrating winning tag team titles. Uh, they shit on because there were tag teams that were um, around the ringside. They talked about SCU, how it was an honor to face them, how they saw them growing up. How could you imagine what it would have been like facing them in their prime 20 years ago? Um, kind of nice little dagger at um, SCU's uh, age, considering they're getting up there. Even though they can still do well at both their ages. So... Cut to Gun Club, um, Austin Gunn and his father Billy was talking about how Billy's a legend, a uh, multi-time tag team champion, how, but I said, even though he's in a second-rate Hall of Fame, <laughs> that he and his son won't jump the line for a tall shot. Second rate Hall of Fame, W. <laughs> Funny, but so they cut to Jurassic Express talking trash to Jurassic Express. Then all of a sudden, Jurassic Express got into the ring, and well, brawl ensued. Uh, the uh, FTR got out of the ring. They got die. Uh, excuse me, ice. Dumped on him by Marco Stunt, and it was just hilarious uh, to see. Um, but apparently, we got Jurassic Express and FTR next week. Should be a fun match. The rest of the tag teams were enjoying the cake. I mean, can't really complain. So, we go from that to Ricky Starks. He came out and imitated Darby Allen talked about how Darby's reckless and how he's injured and alone at home so we got that and said next time he sees Darby he'll kick his ass I'm enjoying the Taz team between Brian Cage and uh, Ricky Sarks like what I said uh, the first time I recorded this, I think perhaps we see Darby Allen face Ricky Sarks. He beats Ricky Sarks. Then perhaps we see Darby Allen and Brian Cage at full gear. And that's kind of the culmination of the feud. So then we go from that to a sit down, or excuse me, we had Nala Rose face Tai Kati. Tai Nara Kati, um, this was her first uh, big match since Deadly Draw Tournament. Um, short match, um, Nala Rose, she won with the Beast Ball. Um, Afterwards, uh, Conti was saved by uh, Hikaru Shida. We're probably going to get another match between Hikaru Shida and Nala Rose. Probably not at full gear, but should be interesting. So, for next week, we got Chris Jericho 
and Jake Hager for his private party. You got an NWA World Title Match or Women's Title Match between Thunder Rosa and Eva Lise. Um, some good matches, like I said, for next week. So, next we had JR sit down with Tang Omega, who's kind of like iffy, like nonchalant to be there. K Omega was asked about what happened over the weekend, and Omega talked about how you win titles, you lose titles, or belts, he said. But so you take that and you move on. How he and Hangman had chemistry in the ring, but now maybe it's time for him to go solo again and give the K Omega. Uh, they won it since day one. So, two sides of the story, two sides of the coin, per se, between K Omega and the Hangman. K probably is not turning heel, or he may turn heel, but we'll see. When the cleaner happens, it will happen. So then we got to the main event. Roy Lee for Dusty Rhodes for TNT Championship. This was fun. Um, it's kind of weird seeing Dustin in the blue now instead of the red. But they started out fighting on the outside. Um, and then they got um, two back in the ring. Dustin hit a cold red. On Dustin for near fall. He crossroads and for a two count. Uh, Brody Lee hit power bomb uh, for a two count. Was a senton off the apron um, from Dustin to Brody. Then he hit a power driver in the ring for a two count. A big clothesline. Um, after they were exchanging by Dustin for a two out. Then at the end after two thrust kicks by Brody Lee, he discus Laria um, on Dustin. For the win, Brody Lee retains uh can't really say much. Um fun match. Um afterwards uh they sat um Dustin and QT Marshall, his tag team partner at the feet of the Dark Order. And the Dark Order and Brody Lee raised Saul. And that was how the AEW Dynamite went off the air. Solid performance from AEW. Was the final show, so wasn't expecting much, but... Some quality matches, um, a bunch of good promos. Uh, obviously, they'll be back on the horse and um, more steam. Um, we'll assume next week uh, as we catapult towards the build for the one year anniversary show on October 14th and then all out. Now, AW, they said that it was going to be either Thursday or Wednesday next week due to the NBA playoffs. Um, so, not sure when, but find out. I'll find out, and then there will definitely be an AW review next week. Not sure what day because I'm not really sure. What they're get, what day they're gonna have it, but there will definitely be an AW review next week. Uh, but nonetheless, um, so out of my NXT, excuse me, my review for tomorrow, and then I will have another episode of Sports Overview of Topics. Uh, Upload either Monday or Tuesday. It depends because the week one of the NFL um, 
season is tonight and then Sunday, Monday. So either Monday or Tuesday will be the review going up for sports overview of topics. But nonetheless, I hope you guys enjoy this episode of Sancho Dynamite. Um, I'm your host, A.J. Tune Love. Like and subscribe. I uh, will help out that video. I'll see you all tomorrow for my XC review. So thank you all, and I'll be back.